Ladies and gentlemen, Jessica Herrera. Thank you. Thank you very much. G'day, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, this is my first time in the US and first time presenting to a whole bunch of people. So I just want to thank everyone to come in and view my talk. I uh, also want to give a good shout out to everyone online, especially my Australian friends waking up at 4 a.m. just to see me online. Uh, anyone back in London as well watching, hello, and everyone else, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Jess Herrera, also known as Herrerasaurus Online. Uh, if you look up Herrerasaurus though, it is a real dinosaur, so it will come up with a lot of dinosaur stuff. Uh, so I am, I, well I call myself a 3D character generalist, because I do everything to do with characters where it's like modeling, animating, uh, rigging, texturing, lighting, yeah basically anything to do with characters. Um, I currently work in London, I moved in January and I work at a really awesome studio, award winning studio called Animade. Uh, check out their stuff, they do awesome character things, super inspiring, everyone there is super quirky and awesome, they're like my second family. So. Uh, I guess I'll show you guys my show reel, um, just so then you can see a bit of what I do. Thank you. Wow, thanks. <laughs> uh, today I'm going to talk a lot about uh, modeling for character animation in Cinema 4D. So uh, I've been modeling for a couple of years now. Uh, lots of characters, uh, retopologizing, modeling, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I want to talk uh, through a few of my tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Uh, so I really hope that you guys might know what retopologizing is, because some people don't know what it is. Uh, the dictionary does not know what retopologizing means. Uh, uh, so I'm going to talk about it now. Uh, retopologizing is the process of rebuilding or manipulating geometry of your 3D object. Um, and hopefully for the better, I will try and teach you how to do it better, uh, hopefully. Um, Cleaner topology leads to reducing imperfections in your renders, which can be caused by, uh, like, if you subdivide something with really bad, like, geometry, you can get some pinching, flickering, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you have good topology, that kind of limits uh, the amount of uh, weird things that happen. Uh, it also helps lower poly count. So if you are uh, maybe making things for games uh, with like having to make it really low uh, counts. Also, if you have huge scenes and you have like a million characters like just animating, it's really good to just get into the uh, rhythm of making everything lower poly counts and then you can just go up uh, after by putting them in subdivs and stuff. Uh, also, it leads to better edge loop management for easy UV mapping because nobody likes UV mapping. Am I right? No one likes UV mapping. Uh, if you have good edge loops, uh, it's really easy to just like select a whole loop and then you can just cut it. But if you have like really bad geometry, it's like super hard to do that. Uh, it also leads to easy skinning for rigging. So you can like select a, a loop and then you can just uh, assign the same weight to one bone. So, so much easier. Uh, and better deformations for your mesh for animating 
uh, if you're using pose morphs or uh, even just when you're bending a limb, like when you bend your arm and you've got some really nice loops going around your arm, there's not going to be any weird, like, stuff. Uh, and also, cleaner topology, uh, to cleaner topology leads to happy artists, where if you're just the only artist doing it, you'll be happy. If you're sending your models off to someone else, they'll be happy. Just everyone's going to be happy. Uh, so before I actually get into anything 3D, uh, I can't uh, stress more than planning your model, uh, like planning your character beforehand. Uh, coming from a design-led uh, company, we always try and plan our model beforehand and get, get the client's sign off. So I'm going to talk about this character, which I did at Animate, a little personal project uh, that is initiation kind of thing called props. So everyone at work uh, writes a little prop on a piece of paper and we put it in a hat and then I pick out a, a word and then I have to make a 30 second animation out of it. Uh, so this is a character that I designed for it. I wanted my 3D to look really 2D. I wanted to try and do something new. Um, basically, every time I do a character, I will always draw it out like this. I've got the in-situation kind of pose, and then I've got the A or T pose, whether you want your arms to be out straight or to the side. Uh, with my character, she has really thick arms, so I did it to the side. Uh, also, like, the side and the top. So when I actually go into 3D, I will bring these in as planes so then I can model exactly to that character. Um, another thing before you start modeling is thinking about the way that your character moves. Uh, so in this case, with my, the same character as before, I knew that she was going to have a few mouth movements. Um, but I, before I actually went into 3D, I wanted to think about how the topology was going to look on her face because she was going to have really exaggerated mouth. Um, so I drew a few little bits and pieces. Uh, here's, here's an example of me drawing over some basic topology. You can see I really uh, looked around the mouth carefully. And this over here, this one is the final model. So it's pretty similar, maybe give or take a little bit, but this, yeah. Basically, that, that's how I will start off before I actually get into 3D. So now I am going to go into 3D, um, but I'm not going to show off my models just yet. I want to talk real basic topology because I don't know if anyone else here knows much about topology and how important it is, but I've got to talk about it now. So uh, good topology. This is a quad. We like quads tries, they're, they're okay, like uh, people in games use these to uh, make their poly count a lot less. I personally don't use them. I, I never really made anything with games. I've, I've made a few Unity stuff, but it, it subdivides your quads anyway. Uh, this dreaded end gone, be gone. No, 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 no. Uh, on your character that's moving, don't use these. If you can only get away with using these if you are hard surface modeling uh, and you're not going to subdivide, it's fine to use this. Like, I'm not saying you can't use them, but in my talk, and I talk about characters that are moving, don't use them. They're going to look terrible if they are. Um, I'm just going to go into this file. Ooh, which one? Which one is the good model and which one's the bad one? Um, so, as you can see, I originally made this one for a little uh, project at Animate, and then I really tried to not die and do this one. I tried to make it as terrible as I could. Um, sadly, there are people out there that model like this, and I'm not saying that you're horrible people, but it makes me cringe every time I see it. Um, you can see that there's like, this is, this is subdivided, and you can see there's uh, a few weird displacing bits. You can see she needs to like face cream or something. She's got quite a lot of wrinkles. Um, I'll turn back my lines on. Uh, I've got like a triangle, uh, a, a weird end gone here. Just uh, you can see that one. That one's terrible. And, and then oh, look at look at that. 
it, it's making my eyes water right now. I'm going back. Ooh, can't look at that anymore. Um, another, the next thing I want to talk about is folds. So when you're modeling, these, these two examples, they look great. Like it's like, that's really nice topology. But then as soon as you go to the side, you notice that, especially on this one, there's some weird, uh, I don't even know what you would call that, but yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not calculating properly. Whereas you look at this one and it's nice and it's, it, it's following the topology. So this, this is a good example. And I'll go back to my characters before. You can see like around the nose, there's no real definition. But then you look at like this, this character here. I've really made a really nice loop around the nose, so then you're getting that nice definition. Uh, so yeah, th that that works for like if you're doing like underarms or around anything really. So um, I'm going to go back to this. Uh, the next one is dreaded poles. So I have noticed online a lot of people always ask, "What do I do? Is, is this bad?" Uh, can I have this pole here? Where, where sh what should I do? How do I move it? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm going to take you through how to move these dreaded poles because uh, you, can't, you can't get away with not using them. Uh, they're always going to be in your mesh, but uh, you can easily move them around to a preferred place so then they're not obstructing and making any weird pinches on your model. So this first one is three edges into one vertex. Uh, occasionally this one will come up, especially if you're doing some loops or uh, trying to reduce your uh, edge count, uh, well, getting your uh, edge loops uh, constrained into like maybe two going into one kind of thing. Uh, the next one is the main, uh, your whole mesh is usually going to look four into one point. Uh, the dreaded five uh, into one is uh, probably the worst one, but we can't avoid those. We just, I'll teach you how to try and move them around. The six or more, I usually try and not use these, but uh, I know like in cinema, if you create a sphere or a cylinder or any of these things, they're going to come up with this kind of thing at the top. Personally, the only time I will leave it is if it's like uh, an eyeball or something and it's not going to be deforming too much. Uh, but most of the time I will subdivide that into quads, but that's just personal preference. I'm a bit anal like that. Um, another thing to think about is ed edge reduction tips. So, so as I was saying about this uh, three, three into one, these this kind of occurs when you're trying to reduce your edge flow throughout your character. So in these kind of uh, situations, this one is two going out as one. And you can see that I've got an L-shaped loop going in there. That's good for maybe a jawline or on your hand and all that kind of stuff, like just moving your geometry to flow with your forms of your character. Uh, the next one is three into one. And this is like, you can imagine this around like a mouth or an eye or something like that. Four into two has just got an extra line in the middle. The same as the five into three has got two extra lines. The six into two is actually adding in an extra loop in there. So that, that comes in handy. And you can see I've got a hand, just one of my hands that I've had from one of my characters. Uh, I've, I've got some, you can see that I, I've, I've done some of these techniques to reduce the flow going up the arm because I didn't want to have two extra lines coming out here. But you can see that I've followed the, the contour of, of the hand. So when it does bend, uh, it, will, it will morph nicely when it like grabs something or anything like that. So that's, that's just one thing. I'm going to go now back into these characters. And I'm going to show you one by one a few of my ways of moving some of the uh, poles. So I'll firstly talk about how to move this three edge pole. I've got three different forms. Uh, today I'm going to, I don't know if you guys know many of the polygon uh, tools, but if you click M on your uh, keyboard, it comes up with a whole bunch of tools. And in this case, 
I want to use the knife tool for this uh, first part. So I'm going to press MK and I'm going into points mode. Basically this first uh, way of moving the uh, pole is going to be adding in one edge but then removing another edge. So you're not actually adding in any, any extra geometry but you are going to be moving it around. So I'm going to start off by cutting through this part and you can see I've got this triangle here and I don't want the triangle so I'm going to go uh, into my edges, edge mode and I'm just going to select these edges. Basically imagine this continues going. For this exercise I'm not going to select the whole thing. Um, but I'm going to use another tool which is going to delete these. So I, uh, it's called the dissolve tool and if you press M and N it's gone. So as you can see, I've moved the pole from this point to this point. Uh, and you can continue doing that as, as far as you want to move it. Uh, so that this is my most likely way of moving my pole when I'm do doing retopologizing. I'm just going to undo all this to work on the next way is adding in two lines. So this is going to be uh, if you want to have extra geometry in. Uh, so this version, uh, I'll cut through here again. And then I'm also going to cut another one through here. And so that's going to be, if you can imagine, that continues off in your model. However, if you, you've got nice uh, edge loops in this case. This one doesn't, but uh, oh well. Uh, I'm going to select this line because I do not want these uh, tries. And I'm just going to dissolve it again. So as you can see, I've moved the pole from here to up here. Um, I'm just going to undo that again, and I'm going to show you the final way of moving the pole. So this version is actually going to delete two lines, two, two rows. So I'm going to cut across here and here. And so now I've made this weird five-edged and gone. It's not, it's, it's not going to be there soon. Um, so I'm going to go back into my uh, select tool and I'm going to select this edge and this edge. And I'm just going to dissolve them. And uh, dissolve that one too. So as you can see, I've moved the uh, pole down below here. Now another thing is you can cut these edges any way you want. If you want your pole to go up the top, you can cut it in a different way. So it's quite versatile in that way. So I'm just going to undo that again. And now I'm going to take you through moving this guy, the five edge uh, pole. So this one is very similar to the way that I showed you the three last um, ways to move things. I'm going to use the, the cut tool again. But this one is a little bit more tricky because I'm going to use another tool in a second. Uh, so this is adding in one edge and deleting one edge loop. So uh, in this case, I'm going to add an edge loop going through here. And now I'm going to go into points mode because what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this uh, vertex and I'm actually going to weld it to this vertex. So if I go M and Q uh, and press Control and click onto the uh, preferred vertex that I want and release, I've uh, now uh, wel welded it to that vertex. Uh, now I'll just go back into my edge uh, selection and select this edge and dissolve it. And now I'm going to dissolve this one as well. And as you can see, I've moved the uh, pole up here. So it was here and now it's up here. So that's, that's uh, the first way of moving your uh, five edge uh, pole. Now I'm going to undo that all and I'm going to take you through the next one. So the next one is adding in two edges. Um, so I'm uh, similar to the last one, I'm going to cut some extra edges here. So, and then I'm going to add another one down here. There you go. 
And uh, I'm going to go back into selecting this edge and I'm just going to dissolve it. And now you can see that I've moved the uh, five uh, pole just next to it. Uh, so I'll undo that again. And the last version is to, uh, you're basically getting rid of two lines again. So I'm going to go back into the knife tool and simply just cut a line through here from, you could cut it this way or that way, you know any way you want to move your, uh, your pole. And I'm going to go back into selecting. I'm going to select this edge and this edge and dissolve them. And now you can see my five pole has moved all the way down here. Uh, if you wanted to like move these around, you, uh, I'll show you a few extra tools to move your geometry. But for now, that, that is uh, how to move your poles. So uh, I just want to uh, show you, I've actually, uh, I'll just undo all that. I'm going to turn on my subdivision and turn off my wireframe. And I've actually animated these characters. I just want to show you that you can see in this character, it's a bit shiny, but you can see that there's really nice deformation going on around here. Uh, but you look at the other one and you can see that there's this weird, that, that's a, a, like a six-sided pole, like pinched in the corner of the mouth. I ha I, sadly, I've seen a lot of models that some reason people do that. I don't know why. Uh, you don't want to do that because it's just, you can already see that it's causing some weird issues. Uh, so I just wanted to show you animated. So now I'm going to show you more of my characters. So I have a few characters here that I've made in the past. This one from previously from my uh, drawings that I did before. Um, I've highlighted all of the uh, edge loops and I love edge loops. I have dreams about edge loops. I talk about edge loops all the time. I love them. Uh, no one really understands me but uh, I hope other people will now love edge loops too. Um, so I've, I've really, I, I want to highlight around the eyes of all of these characters. I've actually animated these guys with some pose morph tags. Um, I use uh, pose morph a lot with my animation with facial uh, like morphs and stuff. It's really super simple to uh, use. Sadly, I don't have enough time to go into it too much, uh, but you can always ask me questions at the back. Um, so you can see that like, the eyes aren't looking terrible when they, they close, the mouth is like nicely de deforming, there's no pinching. Uh, the, I'll look at this character, she's got quite large eyes and, and, and it's looking quite natural. Um, you can see also that I've placed my poles in specific areas. So my rule is I always try and put my five edge poles as far away from the most deformed part of the face. So usually steer clear of the mouth and the corners of the eyes. I always try and keep them as close as possible to anywhere that it's not going to move as much. Um, so you can see that I've got a nice loop around the nose as well, and so it's caused a few uh, poles there. But as I said, you just can't get away with not having poles on the face. You just have to be really strategic in where you place them. The same as this character, I, um, I haven't got any poles around the corners of her mouth, and her pole is like all the way up here and a little hidden one underneath her nose. She has very abnormally large eyes. Uh, so I tried to make the poles as far away as possible from any of the deforming parts of her eyes. So that's, that's my, a few of my characters. I do admit, as I was learning how to do good geometry, I really admired people's uh, models and putting these colours around your edge loops really helps to kind of work out whether or not you've got good geometry or not. Uh, I think I, I, I've, I've, I'm always on Pinterest looking at other people's work and that's just how I've managed to self, pretty much self-taught myself how to do good geometry. So who knows, maybe I'm not actually very good at this and this is what I think it's supposed to be, but uh, 
yeah, it works for me and I hope it works for everyone else if you're inspired to do some more characters. It's not so scary. Um, so the next uh, slide I'm going to go into is actually not a human. It is, I'm going to say a puma. I made it just one night and I was like, oh, I'm going to make a cat. Uh, so this, ad this actually didn't take me very long to make. I'm going to teach you how I actually created this guy just really quickly. Um, an old uh, way that I used to model uh, at university, I remember I had one class and we learned how to box model. And I'm sure maybe anyone else that out there has learned about box modeling and uh, literally starting off with a cube. Here's my cube. I'm just going to turn on uh, my wireframe so you can see my subdivisions. Uh, so basically, as you can see, I've got my front and side view. You go, uh, you can see from uh, in all my viewports. This cube, I have deliberately, oops, I have deliberately got a cut right in the middle because what I will always do is symmetrize my all my characters. So what I've done is, I'll show you in the next uh, part, is a subdivision surface. Uh, I always put this in because uh, if I have a really low poly uh, model, I will always uh, try and put extra geometry into it to uh, look smooth. But when you have really low uh, polys in the first place, it means that uh, sub, uh, doing your subdivision is not going to break your computer. So I'm just going to turn that one off and show you. This is my base mesh. Uh, what I've done is I've got a symmetry tool, which you can find in uh, under this menu. Uh, there's, I, I, I'm love, I love all these uh, really awesome intuitive stuff. Uh, you can, uh, so I, I use, in this case, this symmetry. And I put it in a null because sometimes I might like create eyes or eyebrows or noses or anything and they might be separate from my cube and I can continue putting them inside my symmetry without having to put numerous symmetries. Uh, so in this case, you can see, I'll, I'll turn off my symmetry and you can see I've got half a cube. Uh, and uh, if I go into my, all my views, you can see I've started to mold it to the face. And the way that I did this was I just went in and had the move tool and moved it around. There's also some really cool uh, sculpting tools in Cinema 4D. So uh, if you pre uh, I use this shortcut a lot, it's uh, shift C and I can search anything in uh, any, any tag, any tool, anything I want. And if I, uh, my favorite uh, tool in uh, the sculpting tools is smooth. And this, this, this one here, uh, I can basically smooth my points. And over here, you've got like your pressure and your size and all that. You, you can also use like, uh, I don't actually know, the, the wiggly bracket tool. Someone tell me what that is. I don't actually know what that's actually called. That's how you go um, bigger and smaller. Uh, so I'll just undo what I did there because it was awful. Um, uh, you can also find all this stuff in sculpt and brushes. Sometimes I will uh, pull that out and I can easily just get into any of these. Uh, you've got like your pull, you can move things around, pull them around, you can grab tools and move, move your points around freely. I won't go too much in detail with all these because they've got so much uh, involved and there's plenty of other tutorials that uh, can take you through sculpting. At this stage, I have very minimal uh, amount of points anyway to move around and I like to s stay that way while I'm box modeling because then I can easily just like move things with just the move tool. Um, I'm going to show you quickly, once I've gotten to this stage, kind of really, really base model, how I start to add in e e detail. And I always, always, always start off with the eyes. So I'm just going to show you really quickly how I would make an eye to make the nice loops around the eye. So in this case, I'm going to use the knife tool again. Uh, it's quite easy. I'm just going to uh, cut an X through this uh, 
uh, quad. And this is where I'm going to make my eye. I know it's not in the right spot, but for this purposes, it uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, I also have this, um, one of my favorite tools as well is uh, the slide tool, which is M and O. And you can actually move uh, your points on any edge you like. It's amazing uh, when you don't want to go into the move tool and then having to go, oh, got to try and like put it in the right spot. Oh, gosh. But yeah, that's, that's just a personal preference. I love that tool. I use it all the time. So I'm going to go back into the knife tool and continue my eye. I'm going to just make another cube inside of this uh, cube. Press escape, so then I've got that. It doesn't look like an eye right now, but what I will do is I'm just going to cut through here. Uh, so imagine this is going to be a, another extrude, uh, another edge loop, and I'm also going to do it on the other side, and I'm just going to link it to the, this part anyway. Um, so as you can see, there, there's a, a little bit of deformation going on here. I'm just going to go into my slide tool, and you start noticing that there's an eye forming. And I'm going, oh, look at this awful thing in the middle. What am I going to do with that? So I'm just going to go back into my selection tool, go into edge mode, and I'm just going to dissolve these. And look, it's an eye. It's a very bad eye, but, you know, the, it, the, the start of an eye. And another tool I'm going to use is the, the loop tool, so the, which is M and L. And I can easily add in extra uh, geometry. Uh, I can chuck it in there and start manipulating points around the eye. So you can see now that that's a, that's a really good basis of an eye. Uh, another thing on, a, on a, what this uh, kind of character is the, the mouth. Like everyone's like, uh, the mouth is going to have a lot of expression and, and movement. I'm just going to show you how you can easily start a mouth. In this case, uh, I'm going to cut a line going through here. This is, imagine this is where I want my mouth to go. And I'm going to do the dreaded make an end gone. And uh, so this is the basis of my edge loop. And this, this is looking terrible. Jess, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Uh, so to fix this, I'm actually going to cut into my try and do this. And now I can easily just like slide my polygons around, uh, my, my points around. And you can see there's, there's a nice loop going on there. Uh, if I go into my loop tool and cut, you can see now I'm getting some nice uh, loops going on. And it's not like I'm adding in extra geometry going through all of the body where that's just going to be really painful to try and play around with any points. Uh, so I'm just going to show you uh, the next form, i turn my subdivision off. You can see that in this, this part, you can see that my mouth is starting to uh, become more like the character's mouth. You can see from the side, it's starting to look more like uh, my picture. And the eye, I've, I've really uh, made it smaller, put it in the right spot. I've also got some, uh, I've got a really nice edge loop going around the nose and even around the uh, would you say cleft lip? I'm not sure what you would call that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm starting to put in all the major details, but it's still really uh, base, basic modeling. And I've still got like these awf this awful pole in the wrong spot. Like I need to, get, I need to move that. Uh, but then uh, if you, oops, sorry, wrong one, uh, this one. Uh, the, you can see that even uh, at this, at this stage, I'm still uh, continuing. Um, there's, there's some bad geometry going on there, and I know that I don't want to wrap it around the, the head or anything. But basically, if I go back to my original one and you notice, I'll just turn off my subdivision. I use the same techniques as before that I was showing you to move the pole from down here to up here. So now that's not really as a troubled area up near the eye. This mouth is all clear to be, uh, you can move it as, as much as you can. The jaw's going to look nice. I've actually got a nice loop going around the jaw as well. Uh, and so, yes, there is a pole here, but at this stage, this part of the face is not going to move as much as 
this part of your mouth. So that, that's uh, one way of modelling in Cinema 4D and that was the way that I first started modelling. The next way I'm going to show you is uh, kind of a, an, a quicker way for me, especially with my characters, you can tell that they're very stylized and have like a lot of uh, geometric parts. Like this, this girl, or could be transgender, I tried to make it gender neutral, um, has uh, like a, a cylinder face and uh, very simple legs and simple arms. So, as you can see, this is terrible geometry and you're thinking, why would I do this? This is horrible. But the whole main reason is uh, I'm basically blocking out my character and this could, if you use other programs like ZBrush or uh, any other 3D program that comes out with really dense meshes and you need to retopologize them in Cinema 4D to be rigged in a more manageable way, uh, this this uh, way that I'm going to show you is a lot easier uh, than trying to start uh, moving points around on an infinite crazy model. Uh, so in this case, I'll just show you what I've done with this base mesh. I've done simple things like I've got a bully in with, uh, I've got a, a, a spine, with, uh, I've used, just drawn a spine here. I'll just turn this off so you can see. I did a really simple spine just following the contour of the body and then that's turned into a nice tube for her arms and then I've, I basically made a square and then I just sculpted it using the sculpting tools to create that kind of look. If you look on, on the side, it's almost basically the same as my drawing. Um, another cool thing that I uh, have learnt in... R20, which uh, I haven't really been exposed to other forms of Cinema 4D, but uh, apparently the uh, voxels, which I think in the previous uh, presentation was really uh, talked about in full, but I use it very basically. Uh, basically, I have created... I wanted... I could have just made... That, like, I've made these out of simple cylinders and uh, I've got a spine... Uh, loop. If I turn all this off, you can see I've got the fingers and the, the arm and it's uh, looking very basic. But the reason why I've put them into a, this uh, volume builder is this really cool thing that I've actually got this ugly cube that I've subdivided into my uh, cylinder. So then basically when I start sculpting uh, on top of it, I can kind of get that contour of... What, where I want that this is basically the handprint in the middle because otherwise it would be just a huge uh, ugly circular thing and then I'd have to manually move points around a little bit too much that I can't be bothered doing that I'm, I'm lazy so uh, basically I'm going to show you my favorite tool and I'm saying favorite tool because this is like I use this so much in cinema called the polypen tool so the polypen tool is in the normal tools menu and it's uh, M and E. So basically, uh, before I start using this tool, uh, the, I could just start drawing geometry anywhere on the screen. But the, the, the main reason why I've made these meshes is I can actually snap to them. So I'm going to enable snapping and I'm going to enable it for polygon snapping, which is already enabled. And now I can actually draw straight onto my, my uh, mesh. And look, I've, I've just made a, uh, a, a quad right there. And uh, it's quite easy. You're basically just clicking. I'm just clicking around. Uh, really cool, intuitive uh, shortcuts. I can press Control and click and delete something. Uh, I can press Control and drag on and uh, any, any part and I can duplicate it. Uh, I can move my points around uh, anywhere and they're going to be sliding on the uh, geometry. Uh, I can also, a really cool thing is, I, if I press Control and Shift, I can actually make a circle. And if I continue holding down the clicking button, I can actually add more or less uh, polygon, uh, I mean, uh, points on my 
mesh, which is really awesome if you want to do that. Um, so there's other things in here, like uh, if you turn auto weld off, it means that your um, points are not going to snap together. You can also uh, extrude by pressing control onto a face. Uh, a cool thing is, uh, I can't really demonstrate it here because I don't have a flat surface, but if you, uh, this, this uh, option here is if you are going to be creating like a, a house or something and you're extruding a whole heap of uh, polygons, you can actually weld them to your uh, next shape. If you turn that off, they will just be separate uh, polygons. It's really hard to show here because I don't have a flat surface. Um, but yes, uh, so there's some really cool tools uh, with the uh, poly pen, but what I really want to show you is how easy it is to really do a quick face. So I've created a uh, symmetry already, and I'm just going to put this poly pen that I had created before uh, into the symmetry so I can now start drawing on the face. Now, as I said before, I like to start off with the eyes. And every time I start off with the eyes, I always start off with six, uh, uh, an edge loop of six. So basically, like you saw on the, on the Puma, I had made a square into six. So I had six uh, quads around it. So I'll just show you now. I'm just going to start drawing uh, the eye now. So this is uh, very uh, not planned. If I was actually doing this properly, I would probably go into uh, the side view and basically move them into a proper spot. So I want my eye to kind of look nice. But in this case, I, I don't want to take too much time to make it look pretty. I'm just showing you how to use the tools. So as you can see, I, you can see that now I'm making a, a nice loop. And it, it's uh, created automatically a shape in the middle here. I'm just going to get rid of that because I don't like it. Uh, so that's an eye. You can see that's an eye. And the next thing that I will start doing is the mouth. And the same thing with the eye, I will start off with six. So I will quickly do a very ugly mouth so I'm not really going to, to my design So as you can see now, it's a really, really, really scary looking face. Uh, now you're probably thinking, how the hell am I going to get these all put together? Now every face is different. And in this case, this girl's face is super long. And I'm going to really, I'm going to start working on the nose because I want there to be a contour around this part of the nose. And that's why I've got this uh, ugly looking shape there. I'm just going to m uh, make a, a quad very simply at the, the base of the nose. And I'm going to make, this is snapping around the nose. Later on when I start adding in more geometry, I can get a real uh, nice defo de deform, sorry, excuse me, uh, around the nose. Uh, but I want to start drawing upwards. I'm just gonna break it here. You can see this is uh, going to be a nice loop going around the nose. I'm going to link this to the eye now. And now it's going to, oh, I don't know why I did that. I'm just going to draw a triangle there and get rid of that line. You can see now that this is going to start going around the eye, which is quite nice. Uh, I can move these points around uh, however I like. This is not really looking that great at the moment, but it's the basis of it. This is going to be basically uh, a really nice uh, loop all around the face. So I can continue filling in the middle of my face here. As you can see, it's now starting to look more proper. Pretty, still pretty ugly, but uh, this is 
going to continue. Blah, 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 blah. Here we go. There you go. I've done the, the basis of the front of the face. I'll just finish off the nose uh, through here. There we go. And again. And finish off that. If I was doing this properly, I would probably uh, make these all exactly symmetrical there. But you can see there's gaps. But basically now, this is a face. And I can easily now add in loops uh, for extra, uh, def uh, like, you want to put more uh, stuff in here because this is not a very nice looking face. But for instance, around the mouth now, I can start pulling out. A, this is going to be a really nice uh, loop. And you don't have to worry about uh, adding in too much geometry all over your, your body. Whereas if, if you were like making something on, with this uh, shape, you would be making the whole loop go everywhere. You don't really want to have too many uh, parts of uh, the uh, mesh that you don't really want to be playing around with. With, with this case, you're, you're really uh, making sure that you've put them in, in a correct place so you don't have to worry about moving them around too much. So that's uh, really simply the face. I just want to show you uh, my character in the uh, animation. So I animated this just with the uh, basic rig and modified a few things myself. I added in a few things with Expresso to add in sliders. You can see, uh, I'm just going to turn uh, lock on all my bits so then I don't have to select them. I can, uh, as you can see, I've got like some mouth slides, uh, a, a few little bits and bobs that I can uh, play around with. I actually animated this. I, I hope it plays. You can see my face is animating. And all the blend shapes are looking really nice around the, the face. Um, I'll just go into the main scene. Uh, it's a bit slow because I have some cloth simulation on her skirt. Uh, but you can see that all my geometry is looking really nice, uh, all clean. Once I, uh, in my render, I'll have some nice uh, subdivisions going on there. Um, so basically, I think now I just want to show you this final animation. No one has actually seen it. Uh, we haven't released it yet. The music is still getting made. Uh, I'm very sorry because I have done my own sound effects and they're temporarily for, for now. But I really want to show you the animation anyway. Uh, so this is my props animation. Uh, I'm just warning you, at Animade, we do weird things. So this is a bit weird. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so you can find me at uh, on Instagram, Herrerasaurus. I'm on there all the time. If you have any questions, you can always inbox me. Uh, I have a website. You can email me through the website. Um, and also check out the studio that I work at, Animate, as well. They're super awesome. If you have any questions about anything character-related, uh, I'll be out the back. Uh, and I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you.